Hello and welcome to CBS Sports Hawaii. So today I'm looking at potential breakout players. Who's going to be the next Devontae Adams? I got to sit back, man. I, I just, you got to get more comfortable. I don't like sitting up, getting in your face. So this is how it's going to be. I'm sitting back. Also, by the way, the get up. I've decided that this is just a thing now. Um, after two days of ridiculous clothing and wearing hats, which I never wear. I don't wear hats. Um, yesterday, I just thought it would be funny to throw on a hat because I had a cheese hat on. And today I was like, I'd keep the tradition going if I had any hats, but I don't. And then it dawned on me. <laughs> I got a whole box, and there's a glove in there, too. I bought those to sell, and they're not selling, so now I own them. Um, so, yeah, CBS Sports. Also, I look terrible in hats, so this is a terrible tradition, but um, we're, we're rocking it, man. We're just, uh, this is what we do now. This is what I do, anyways. You do whatever you want. I don't care what you do. It's your own life. All right, so for those that don't know, what am I talking about? I forgot my sweet music. Hold up. Hold on. Ooh. I can't hear it. Can you hear it? I can't really hear it. It's very quiet. Let me test it. It's working just fine. So what am I talking about when I talk about Devontae Adams? So when Devontae Adams started out, and I, I wanted to go back. So today I went back and I looked at some articles for when he first came out. It seems to me that year one, which is not exactly how I recall it, but my memory is just trash, so it doesn't matter. I don't trust it. That's why I do research. Year one, people were still pretty optimistic. Um, Zach Cruz, who's a Packers guy, writes all kinds of stuff. He was, every article I could find, he was at a different website every time, but he was uh, chronicling um, David, uh, Devontae Adams. And it um, seemed like optimism was high, and that's when it dawned on me. 2014, the Packers were invincible. I mean, you might not think that based on how things ended. Unbelievable team in 2014. It just had a bad ending. So you can understand why the optimism would creep up. 2015, though, terrible year, and Devontae didn't really take as much of a step, right? A lot of the optimism for Devontae in 2014 was, well, you know, he's still growing, he's still developing. It was like in October, this article that I read. He, you know, he's just got to refine a couple things, and man, he could really still be something great. And then 2015, if anything, he took a half a step back, and it's like, you know, half the people are, you know, as far as Packer fans, kind of burned out on him. And so by the time 2016 rolls around, you got some people who are saying, let's just move on from this guy. It's not working. He took a little bit of a step, just a little bit of hope. And then 2017, I might have my years all mixed up now, but he obviously just exploded, right? So 2017, 2018, 2019, and he's been getting better every single year. So the question is, who's that guy? Who's the guy that right now everybody's somewhere in between Let's give him a little bit more time and see, and let's just get him off the team. Who's the guy that fits that criteria that is primed to be not just good, but a superstar? Might not be one, probably isn't one, but let's pretend there is, and ask the question, who's that guy going to be? So if you were to ask Packer fans this question and take a survey, I would tell you almost assuredly the answer to the question would be Marquez Valdez-Scantling, or as we like to call them, MVS. Um, it's not a bad thought. Uh, both obviously wide receivers. MVS is, I think he's six foot four, runs in the four threes, I believe. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Also, if you just look at PFF grades, almost identical. The first year was around 60. The second year was about a half a step back. He's at like a 57. So you kind of wait for that launch. Plus, he's kind of primed for it because it's Devontae and nobody. Well, it was Alan Lazard and Devin Funches, so he's behind them. But it's it's not a massive wall. We're not talking Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb that are sitting, standing in front of him and his dreams of being next to Devontae, right? Um, here's my issue with the MVS thing, and it's the reason I'm a little bit less optimistic. And I know some people don't really care, but I do. Despite his six foot four height, despite his four three nine four three seven speed, whatever he runs. Um, the guy was drafted in the fifth round, and he was the third pick in the fifth round. He was drafted behind our punter. So the, the situation is when you're that big and you're that fast and you go that late, there's flaws. 
And in reality, Devante, when he was playing at the level that MVS is currently at, because again, they're they're around the same grade wise. Um, Devante was well below what we drafted him to be, which was to be a great player. You know, Jordy and Cobb and and Jennings and these these guys we're we're talking second round picks that just launched into stardom. That's what Devante was expected to be. MVS, when we drafted him, granted anybody in any fan base that sees his height and his speed is going to say the guy's going to be a superstar. But in reality, if if the Packers thought he was going to be a superstar, he's a first or a second round pick. They didn't take him in the first round or the second round or the third round or the fourth round. In the fifth round, I think they took Equinemius St. Brown, and then they took J.K. Scott, who was a punter, and then they took MVS. So it's not a bad thought that MVS could be the next guy, and cool if he is, but I got somebody else in mind. What I want to do is give you some clues and see how long it takes for you to figure this one out. This person is also a second-round pick. You might already have it. doesn't matter exactly what year, so don't worry about it. This person is also a second-round pick. This person um, was actually expected to be a first-round draft pick. Um, When they fell into the second round and the Packers took him, there wasn't an expectation. I'm trying to think how to say it without giving it away. It was almost a guarantee we have to take him because how is he still on the board? All right, if you don't have it yet, I want to read something to you. This is from Walter Football, who, by the way, is a part of Fan to Fan Network. If you haven't checked it out, fan2fannetwork.com. But Walter Cherapinski wrote, these are his strengths. This is actually Charlie Campbell, whatever. Instinctive, tremendous ball skills, soft hands. Uh, I don't want to give it away. I might have to give it away here. Ready? Dangerous interception skills, a true ball hawk. Threat to take the ball away. Knows what to do with the ball after making an interception good route recognition, can run the route with the receiver, consistently prevents separation, makes big plays in zone coverage, etc., etc., etc. The man that I'm really hoping takes a big leap that has all the attributes to do so, it's just a matter of pulling it out. It's in there. It's just got to come together, and he has not had a lot of opportunities, and he's a little bit a fish out of water. The man I'm talking about is Mr. Josh Jackson. Second round pick. When the Packers traded up in the first round to get Jair Alexander, a lot of people thought, myself included, this might be Josh Jackson coming off the board. After they took Jair, the thought was, well, they're not going to take Josh Jackson. But when he fell all the way to Green Bay, even I was saying, because some people were like, we should trade up and get Josh Jackson if he's there. It's like, that's crazy. We just got Jair. But when he fell all the way, it was a no-brainer. And we got Jair and Josh Jackson. And by the way, Josh Jackson, if you remember, looked amazing. Amazing in that first preseason. He got, I think he he and Jair and Tremont all had a pick or so. It was just, the thought of what could be was just a beautiful thing. It never really materialized because Kevin King never took the step that we expected him to, or at least hasn't yet. Josh Jackson never really took a step. But I think the biggest hindrance is, to Josh Jackson have been, number one, a lack of opportunities, and number two is the fact that he's never really been given a position. They put him outside, they put him in the slot, they put him at linebacker, they put him at safety. He's all over the place. Um, This year, however, with Tremont gone, I really hope they give him a real opportunity to be the slot guy or to be a guy somewhere, probably in the slot. But just give him an opportunity to just lock somebody down and let's see how he does. Um... Because I, I, I really believe, not that I think it's going to happen, but I think there's 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 a guy that we all forgot about. There's a guy that we've already written off that has that superstar potential. A true ball hawk. A really, really good athlete with unbelievable instincts. Just sitting there who has not been given a lot of opportunities. Who is going to be getting a lot more opportunities this year. Be on the lookout for Josh Jackson. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out the Packernet podcast every single morning. I'm going to be going a little bit more in-depth on this topic. It's coming out bright and early, so make sure you don't miss it.